If you're looking for a content explaining what is Tracy and moreover how to configure it, then this episode is for you. Welcome back to the Is It Observable YouTube channel. Today's episode is going to be part of the security playlist where we covered recently couple of episodes in fact. So we recently explained the security best practices related to Kubernetes, we introduced OPA, uh, Gatekeeper, Falco, Tetragon and more. So when covering one of the existent uh, runtime security agents of the market in this channel, I usually try to explain the solution itself, uh, the type of policy provided by the agents, and last, of course, the observability perspective, the data exposed by the agents, and how we basically we can take advantage of that data. Today's episode is going to be focused on another runtime security agents of the market, detecting suspicious security behavior within our Kubernetes environment using again eBPF, and I'm referring to Tracy. So if you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you're going to learn out of this episode. We'll start by presenting, of course, Tracy, what are the components behind the scene, the, the logic behind Tracy, in fact. And then we will look at how to build Tracy policy. We'll see it's quite interesting on that side compared to the other solution that we covered so far. And the last, uh, we will cover the observability provided by Tracy. Tracy is an open source runtime agent provided by Aqua Security. Aqua Security, if you don't know, has built over the years, many useful solutions to secure our applications in our Kubernetes environment. So Aqua Security, by the way, provides an interesting project called the Trivi Operator that we could use to identify vulnerabilities in our con containers deployed in our cluster. And more than just exposing the vulnerability, it also controls that our deployment respect security best practices. But like I mentioned in the episode related to Falco, detecting vulnerability is great, but not enough. That is the reason we need to have a runtime agents to detect suspicious events within our environment. And for that, Aqua Security has built their own agents named Tracy. So when deploying Tracy in our cluster, we will of course have the daemon set deploying the runtime agents using eBPF probes to capture kernel events and then to be able to configure the agents and by building our policy, it also add a Kubernetes deployment with a Tracy operator. So if it's an operator, it means probably there is a CRD. And yes, there is one CRD in our cluster that will be added called policy. The eBPF probe will generate events that will be by default structured in a JSON format. And we could be able to see those detected events by looking directly at the logs produced by the Tracy agents. By default, Tracy is only reporting events related to the default policy deployed by Tracy after the installations. So we'll look at this default policy later, of course. The policy is a sort of rule defining what we would like to track as a Tracy event. But we will cover in details the configuration of Tracy's policies. And if you're wondering if Tracy is actually able to apply enforcement rules by killing or blocking specific events, well, the answer is no. So compared to other agents, Tracy is a bit closer to Falcon detecting events but not reacting. So from a runtime agent, we clearly expect to have details like the time of the events, the details of the processes, the user ID, the process ID, and the information about the container, the Kubernetes metadata, and so on. So Tracy is clearly providing this. So here is an example of a Tracy event. You can see it's a JSON payload. And we will have, of course, the processor ID, the C group, the thread ID, uh, all the things at the end that we expect, like described before, from a runtime security agent. But if you pay attention, there is a syscall. Also, it will have the actual syscall name. And if there are some actual arguments and details about the call, we will have those details in the args details. It reminds me a bit like a tetragon. But here, we did not apply any complex mapping to our kernel functions. Similar to kube armor, the event structure is almost similar to 
all the type of the event. Of course, the args that I just presented would be different depending on the actual call functions or events that has been captured. So similar to Tetragon, the level of details that we can have in our events could be configurable. Tracy in Kubernetes environment has a config map that will allow us to enable or disable details on the events. The configuration config map is Tracy config and will be, of course, located in the same namespace as Tracy. No surprise. All the options uh, of this configuration is available here in the following repo, showing you the config map, uh, the global config map of Tracy. But in my case, I only touch the output settings that defines how the event will be exposed or the various channel used to send the events. One interesting thing is that is the fact that we have the options to first generate, of course, logs into JSON and then send directly the event using the Fluent Forward protocol. That is quite new. Um, and then there's there also another options with is sending the event through a webhook options where we can post the event directly to an endpoint. There's also sections that define details that we would like to add or remove in our event. So here it is, it's called the options. You can see that is, there is various um, booleans that we can enable. Exec env will add the environment variables used by the process. Uh, parse arguments is the details I described previously where Tracy is adding the args details of the events in the logs. I think the default settings is good enough for us, enabling the details on the environment variable, I think is a bit too much and I didn't find any useful information in my particular case. Another aspect is the options to enable or disable Prometheus Exporter and we can also configure the port use uh, for the metrics. Tracy allows us to configure the capabilities, so not to capture capabilities, but basically which capabilities we're gonna use for the Tracy agents. There's also sections about the cache, so the size of the cache used to receive the various eBPF events. Yes, keep in mind that Tracy receive a lot of events and then check if these events match to our policies to actually display those events in the logs. So the cache size will be very important. If we don't want to lose any events, we need to set the right size for our cache. So my first reaction by looking at the Tracy policy was Mm, that sounds a bit light. I will never be able to extend it for observability perspective. But I was clearly wrong. The figuration of Tracy policy is at the end much easier compared to CubeArmor or Tetragon. So the Tracy policy is very simple. So here you have the Tracy, the CRD structure. You can see that you got name, of course. There is a scope, there is a rule, and then we have e filters on events. So my first reactions from the settings was, okay, it's very limited like cube armor or compared to the super high potentials of Tetragon, but I was wrong. So let's have a look at the scope and the rules and jump into the world of the Tracy events. So scope defines where the event will be coming from. I see you coming. No, you won't define K props, trace points, syscalls, whatever. No. So here it's way, way, way much simpler. So you have global, so the entire hosts, container, even coming from containers, not container, so everything except containers usage. And then you can build scope using, for example, to track everything from a specific process, a PID, a user, user ID, or executable. Once the scope is defined, when we can create our rules made of several events. And we'll see later in the actual events, we can decide to apply specific filters to limit to specific namespace, file, uh, whatever. In Tracy, there are six type of events, or we can maybe call them signature. I don't know, I don't know exactly the wording. So, but you have syscalls, networks, security, others, and containers. So you won't have to define the type, you will simply need to assign to the right naming that could correspond to one of those categories. So there is no K-prop, trace point, whatever. You just put a name and that name comes from one of those bundles. 
But one category that I thought was clearly smart was the security card category. They are providing signatures, like I said before, <laughs> that is in fact a predefined code that filter a combination of various syscalls or network interactions to capture known security vulnerabilities. In fact, when deploying Tracy, it will come with the default policy that is made of a couple of those security signatures. But Tracy is providing many other security signatures. So here is the page listing all those security signatures. But from this list, there are a couple of them helping us to detect code injections, uh, modified any scheduling task, detecting any modifications on C group agents, and many, many, many more. So let's have a look at the default policy. So here is the actual default policies that is pre deployed with Tracy. Out of this list, only container crates and container remove are not in the security signature. Of course, I won't uh, describe all of them because it will take forever and it won't be very useful for you. But I will clearly recommend to have a look on those various signatures to enable only the one that you need and moreover, be able to react to dangerous security events that they would be able to, get, to, to detect. But out of the security signatures, you have other types. So we have network that includes any network traffic. So it could be net packet, HTTP request or a response for HTTP, specific DNS calls, TCP packet, whatever. So it's a pre-built events that capture exactly the network events that we need. So here is the list of the network events. Then we have syscalls where we can map to specific syscalls like execcv for executions or fopen for file open. There is an existing list of ex supported syscalls by Tracy. So here is the link to the supported syscalls by Tracy. Then we have extra events. Not sure why they have these sections because they could be in the syscalls or networking but we can find that we have VFS read and VFS write. So if you want to track, for example, uh, read access uh, to files or write access, then those two events would be perfect. Out of just defining the event in our rules, we can apply filters. There are many filters possible. First, the actual data of the events. For example, if you're using any network events, then we probably want to utilize the details of the traffic. So the network traffic sent to local host, I want to basically filter that. Meaning that we can take advantage of the data exposed by the event. Each event has its own sets of data. For example, in the case of HTTP request or response, we'll find in the events, like I said, the arg field that contains the details of the events, the, and, and it change depending on the events, of course. But in the case of HTTP and, and uh, HTTP request or response, it will contain a data field and a metadata. The data will hold, in fact, all the details of the network communications, such as the source or the destinations, meaning that we can easily apply on our rule um, a filter like, say, data destination uh, equal uh, local hosts or data source equal host to host. I want to filter that. Most of the network type will have the similar signature. Of course, we'll find different details. The URL will be available in the request event and the HTTP code and size will be in the response. But out of filtering on the data of the events, we can of course filter on the global data of the events. So the process, uh, the process path, the PID, the user ID, uh, the pod namespace and so on and so forth. So at the end, it's very easy to build a rule. Let's say I want to produce events that report all the HTTP communications of the hotel demo namespace. I will simply create the following rule. So here it is. So in this example, I'm focusing on the scope container because only on the containers of this namespace. And then you can see that I am using the events net packet HTTP response or request and I'm putting the filter on the specific namespace, in my case, hotel demo. As you can understand, the simplicity of the configuration is mainly related to the predefined signature. But one super exciting thing is that Tracy has an SDK allowing us to build our own signature. So we can define what we want to track, what to extract from the event, and I think this is super smart. And I've honestly not tried it to build my own signature, but if you have done it, please 
uh, share your experience in building those signatures. If you add your custom signatures at the end, it will, they will end in a configuration file that will be loaded when launching Tracy. And I wonder if you can add our signatures just by mounting a config map. I guess it should work, but I have not tried that. So let me know if you have done it in a Kubernetes environment. On the observer side, Tracy, of course, by its nature, will clearly extend our visibility. And collecting Tracy events is very simple, either by simply collecting the logs from the Tracy agent, or we could enable the through and forward uh, options in the configuration of Tracy to send the events produced, so the logs, directly to our FluentBit agents or simply our open term collector that has a and forward receiver. It would be great, by the way, if Tracy could also offer the default options to send the events in open telemetry logs format using OTLP, HTTP, or GRBC. But again, with the current feature, it is already very easy to get the details that we need. The other great thing is that most of the events has a common structure, so parsing the events is very easy. It would be, of course, be mainly on the contents of the events, so the arg fields, that basically, depending on the events, it will hold different type of data structure, so the way we're gonna parse will be, of course, de uh, very different. So this is really depends on the signatures that has been applied behind the scenes in the events. Other than that, Tracy exposed by default Prometheus metric. That is great, but there are two negative points about this. The first piece is the documentation is not describing any of those metrics produced. The second piece is the metrics are very focused on the event raised. It's great, but it seems that Tracy is using cache to work properly, it will be very interested to understand how the cache is behaving, the size, the capacity, blah, blah, blah. So it means that we don't have the KPI reporting the health of Tracy or simply of the operator. The only metrics that could help us on that directions are Tracy BPF error to see if there are any errors reporting. Tracy BPF lost events. I guess if you're losing events, then the cache is probably full. Uh, Tracy BPF network capture lost events and Tracy BPF write lost events to see if it's uh, losing network events or specifically write events. Again, it's better than nothing because at the end it exposed at least metrics helping us to put, to understand things, but it would be better to have more health metrics about the actual agents. So we at least with few of those, those metrics, we can understand if Trace is running fine. And of course, if we had those metrics, we could maybe help us to fine tune the configuration of Tracy by adjusting the, uh, the cache size and so on and so forth. That's it for today's episode related to Tracy, another security runtime agent relying again on eBPF. Tracy is very interesting uh, for two reasons. The first is the simplicity of configurations. Um, the fact that you have this, those signatures, you know, that is able to capture events based on a predefined code and also decode part of the arguments, make it very simpler. I mean, of course, Tetragon, you can do that, but the, the configuration by mapping everything and defining the right types is clearly a, a great from a Tetragon perspective, but it could be also a blocker if you have no expertise on that side. So I think Tracy on that side simplify that journey, which is really interesting, and also, it allows you to do very, very crazy things. So that I was very surprised about that. So the policy, I really liked it because I think it was very easy for me to build policies. Again, I have not tried to build my own signature, so I have no experience on that side. Um, and then of course, the fact that Tracy Expose metrics is great. Um, they could be of course improved and of course documented. Um, but one thing that I was really uh, very happy to see in Tracy is the uh, way of configuring Tracy to send to not only produce the logs, uh, the events in a log for file, but being able to push it from using friend forward. I think that was great, uh, especially if you don't want to generate IO in those agents. So again, um, it would be very interesting to compare all those agents. I think Kubarmer, uh, Tetragon, Tracy, uh, and Falco, all of them together, looking at the different angles. So stay tuned. This episode will come soon in the channel to see, to compare, and of course, give my opinion on which agents is better in specific situations. So if you enjoyed today's content, 
don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.